it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a replay analysis, first one sent in of its kind. And uh, as we go through this, please keep in mind that I'm very much uh, having this series be a work in progress. So if you have any feedback or thoughts about how I can make it better, um, feel free to do so. But the whole idea here is that uh, I, I just would like to offer my eyes and ears to provide some feedback. The goal here is not to um, you know, if these guys make mistakes, if they um, do things that seem incredibly obvious to you, I would very much request that you do not, you know, flame or, or you know, go on and on about how they could have done this or could have done that. Try to make it helpful. Try to make it something that is um, constructive criticism. We all, at one point or another, were a level one account who didn't know how to play this game. And so there's only really one way to improve and get better, and that's to learn. And in order to learn, you need to be willing to look at your own mistakes. So first and foremost, I just want to say that I applaud those of you who decided to send this in. Um, okay, so feel free to provide feedback. Secondly, um, any sort of you know, commentary on the gameplay, I really, really, really need it to be focused on uh, constructive criticism, things that they can improve on in a way that is helpful, not, not something that is tearing down. Um, so anyways, this is our first replay. This is going to be focusing on Draven. As I picked this one because um, I am an 80 carry. Primarily, I think I my top three or f out of my top five champions, I think four 80 carries this season and probably last season. So um, now I don't have a tremendous amount of experience on Draven. So if you're looking for Draven specific tips, I will point you in to watch people like Fabi or um, Geronimo. Um, these are guys that have played a lot more Draven than I have. They will stream on occasion and very, very strong Draven players that can really um, provide a lot of a lot better feedback than I can. So, but um, I'm going to be focusing more on just general gameplay, decision making, just general 80 carry type things, um, and so hopefully that will be helpful. Now um, we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be focusing on Draven. Let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about. Um, as we watch this intro to this laning phase. Um, actually, I'm going to pause it for one quick second. So I want to talk about two things. First, I want to talk about the lane matchup, and second, I want to talk about level two. So first of all, the lane matchup. We've got um, Draven and Thresh. Now, when I look at these two, I think that they have a tremendous power to bully through the threat of an all-in. These two champions are very, very strong at going all-in, securing a kill. I maybe would have preferred to see Thresh go for Ignite. Now I do think Exhaust is a fair choice as the game scales because especially with the Kali and Pantheon, it, Exhaust will be really good. But for the laning phase, I think that Ignite on Thresh with Draven is a very scary combo. Now when you look at what they're playing up against, you have Ezreal and Janna, and these two champions are the opposite in terms of strengths and weaknesses than Draven Thresh. They have a lot of long range poke, they've got a lot of disengage, they've got a lot of safety. So you very much have a yin-yang type laning situation. And so I would really, when I would go into this lane, you have to understand how you need to win it and what you need to do to be successful. And so if I was playing Drave in this game, I would be looking to be very aggressive um, at following up on whatever plays Thresh initiates. That's going to really be the core. If Thresh lands a hook as Draven, I'm going to be looking to go super ham and pick up some kills. Understand that Janna and Ezreal are going to be very slippery and be very defensive. But if you can keep posturing aggressively, looking for the all-in, you have a very much you have a much stronger early game than these two. Now let's go ahead and back up just a little bit and let's talk about level two. So, um, okay, this I believe is the first wave they just leashed from the blue buff. Now when I leash, I tend to give. Let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit. When I leash, I tend to give. Um, three auto attacks in, a, in ability, and then I run straight to lane. Um, you have to understand if you go for four, you're probably going to be a little bit late. Uh, but if you don't give that, then you're probably, your jungler is probably going to suffer a little bit. Then when you get to lane, I have a tendency to want to try and just start pushing. So if you can see here, if we just go ahead and pause, you can see that there are these three ranged minions, whereas there's really only, there really isn't that same number of minions on this side. If we keep going, if we pause here, if you look, we've got three melee, three ranged minions, three melee minions, and then you've got a whole bunch of creeps here for the blue side. So what this means is that it's pretty much guaranteed at this point 
That blue side is going to hit level 2 first. Let's go ahead and see how this plays out. You know what? I'm actually going to hide some of these things. There we go. It gives me a little bit better vision. Okay, so right there, they hit level 2, at least Ezreal did. And now they've got a big advantage. They're pushing you into your tower, and you can't really do anything. Let's go ahead and back up and see how we could have done this a little bit differently. Okay, so right here, we get to lane. If I was playing Draven, I would be looking to auto-attack these creeps. You know, right here, you're um, just kind of walking around waiting to last hit. I would be smacking away on these minions, pushing, pushing, pushing. You can see Ezreal's already getting an advantage in terms of HP lead on minions. This means he's going to hit level 2 first. You, I mean, you can see he's already got an mini advantage lead. Draven is, is, is waiting to last hit. I would prefer that he would be trying to push. Um, I even will sometimes go so far, if it looks like it's going to be close, I will go so far as to um, potentially miss creeps just because I want to be pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, so even if it means I'm going to miss a creep or two in the first two waves, I'm okay with that. Because if you look at it now, Thresh and Draven are stuck under their tower, they're a level behind, and Thresh can't really go aggressive. And he throws out a hook, but he's under a tower, you're getting tornadoed, and you just, you know, we talked earlier about how much of an early lane bully these two are, and, you know, because Ezra was able to get a fast push, he was able to negate a lot of that advantage. Now, this is a good thing to know if you are playing Ezreal, a weaker laner, you know, this also applies to somebody like Vayne, who is tip known for having a very weak laning phase. Ooh, there's, there's a hook, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I'm going to pause a sec. So, I just finish my point. If you're playing a, a inferior lane, a lane that is not going to win the level 2 all-in, it is smart to try and push them in under tower because it is almost impossible to be aggressive when you have this big minion wave that is pushing you under tower. If you're going to fight into Janet Ezreal, you're going to have to also fight against their minions. You're going to have to get around their minions. You just aren't in a very good position to do so. So, um, it, like I said, if I was playing Draven here, I would want to be pushing so I can get level 2 so we can be aggressive. But because you got pushed in, you didn't really have the option to be aggressive. Okay, let's go ahead and slow this down. Thresh lands the hook. Now, Draven, very nice, getting some nice auto attacks. Unfortunately, the Flay pulled him out of your E, but that's fine. Um... Okay, so that's okay. That's kind of the end of it right there. I think that was fine. I don't really have any criticism there. You maybe could have been a little bit more um, anticipating your, your, the action of your support and, and trying to quickly capitalize on, on those mistakes as much as possible. Um, basically, if I was playing this, drain, this lane as Draven and Thresh, I am going to be mostly just trying to last hit, but then watching the Thresh. Whenever the Thresh decides to go aggressive, that is your cue to go super ham. Um, as an AD carry in the early laning phase, you really don't have a lot of power to do much. Uh, that's another point where I think you could have been a little bit more aggressive on the Janna. Basically what I'm trying to say is that your support, and this is true of, of, of any laning phase, your support is one of the most powerful, oh there's a nice hook. Yeah. You know, you, you get some nice auto attacks in, but let's go ahead and back this up. I think that could have been a kill. Um, but the core idea here is that your support will set up the kills, and it is your job to respond. Supports are the initiators. Supports are the ones that dictate the pace of the laning phase. And, and all AD carries do is try to respond. Um, but that also means that you need to be in a position to respond. Okay, so Thresh lands the hook. Look where Draven is. He's way back here. Let's watch this one more time. Okay, let's focus on where Draven is. And so you're, you're last hitting, but also keeping an eye on Thresh. This Thresh has done a really nice job so far. You can see he's stepping up, but you're way back here. Uh, step up, use your W, step forward. There's a nice knockback. I think if you would have been a little bit in a little bit better position, posturing forward with your Thresh. Let me just do this one more time. And I'm actually going to slow it down. So I think if you would have been posturing up with your Thresh, you know, he gets a flay, auto attack. You've got your spinning axe ready to go. Um, that's free damage on the Janna while she's just scared trying to run away. You know, watch for Thresh. When he goes aggressive, you go aggressive. Be really quick to capitalize on these opportunities. So you can see Thresh is walking up. You can see him walking up. You can see him auto-attacking. You should be following. Step forward. You can see he throws out this fantastic hook. And look where Draven is. I realize you're catching your axe. But, you know, you get this last hit. But that auto-attack right there, catching that ask, axe, ends up costing you time where you could be auto-attacking Janna, 
There's a nice stand aside. We still have, there's the first auto attack that has to pop through your shield. And so we really only got one auto attack. I think if we could have got one or two more, if we would have been in position to follow up on Thresh's uh, aggression, you perhaps could have gotten a kill. Now, I don't know a lot about Draven specific mechanics. I can't tell you if it would have been worthwhile to just skip one of those axes, you know, the axes that were landing here to make sure you can get in position to step up. I can't really tell you that. Uh, that's something that you can pick up from watching a streamer who really is an expert on this specific champion. But what I can say is that this Thresh has been extremely aggressive. And I don't necessarily think that you as Draven have been doing as good of a job as you could at following up on the plays that he is initiating. You know, it's Thresh's job to initiate, but it's your job to follow up. Just a little bit of a nitpicky thing. I don't think you've been playing the wrong lane wrongly, but I think that there have been chances for you to set things up more advantageous. Um, you know, just to, you know, if you, if you had been pushing for the level two, if you had been a little bit more quick to follow up on Thresh's aggression, you could have maybe secured some kills or just gotten yourself in a much more dominant position. How do I actually pull up? There's got to be a hotkey for this. Well, anyways, 29 to 29, pretty even. And that's not bad, but I think that it could be better. I think that you could be ahead. I think you could have been securing kills, whereas you're just kind of going even. Now, Janna Ezreal is a very safe lane, and so for them, going even is a win. But for you, when you play Draven, you pick Draven because you want to be an early lane boy. You want to crush your lane. You want to snowball the game by the time you get two items. You know, Draven has some obscene mid-game power spikes. So I guess that's how I would have kind of liked to see this lane play out. But, that's okay. That we're here to learn. Um, that's good. Thresh is pushing. I think that's fine. Pushing is good here. We want to make sure we get... If we so um, we didn't quite weren't quite able to push fast enough to get the creeps into tower. So the idea is that when your opponent backs, you can either try and freeze the lane to gain an advantage. When I say freeze, I mean that you only very very last hit and you try to keep the lane pushed in your favor. And so you're using your minions to kill their minions. I'm sorry, you're using their minions to kill your minions. And when your minions die, that means that they are not collecting gold or experience. Or the other alternative is to push, and which means that the tower will be collecting the golden experience. But either which way, you're, what you're trying to do is deny whatever you can to your opponent. Slow pushing, however, doesn't accomplish either, because all the minions are still alive, and they're still there when your opponent comes back. So maybe it would have been better to commit one way or another. All right, so it looks like we see... Skarner coming in. I think Thresh was a little bit slow to respond to that. It looks like we do have a ward here. Um, but a very nice stand aside there is going to escape this gank. So you did a very nice job of reacting to that gank. Good minimap awareness there. Um, I'm sure there were some pings that I may have missed. But overall that was nicely played. They're going to get that pink ward. That's fine. This Thresh has been very aggressive. Okay. Oh, Thresh. Yeah, he got himself a little too aggressive there. I don't know if he was trying to fake out that Janna, but in a 1v3, that wasn't quite so good. But overall, I think this Thresh has done a pretty decent job. You know, I feel like when I talk to a lot of AD carries, a lot of times they're not so happy with their supports, but I actually think this Thresh has done a decent job. Okay, so he's going to let the minions get to tower. That's fine. He probably is too low on HP to really try and freeze it. Looks like you are stepping up here to look at Dragon. That's smart. We definitely don't want to give this to them. Very nice stand aside. Good. Very nice kill there. And now I think you guys should just finish the Dragon. Okay, good. That was a nice play. Pantheon's coming in. Oh, looks like Jarvan's going to fall, but we should be able to secure this kill. Oh, he flashed out. Nice job by him. I don't know who got the Dragon. I didn't end up seeing. I'm sure. I'm pr pretty sure it was Jarvan. Oh, that's going to be a problem. 
All right, but that was good. You did a nice job of responding to that um, attempted dragon. You guys turned it around. You picked up the dragon, which is good. You gave up a couple kills in the process, but I think overall it was probably worth it. So nice job. All right, so we're... You, okay, okay, one thing I want to talk about here is let's just go ahead and look at how this lane sits right now. Draven is double buffed. You have a BF sword, and you've got a Thresh. Ezreal has no mana, he has a Sheen, and he has a Janna. These two right here have all of the power in the world. I would be looking to play very aggressively with these double buffs, because there is, I mean, unless you misplay significantly, you are going to win every fight. I mean, I would just be looking to go super ham. Good, good ultimate. Keep going, don't... He got, oh... Alright, so it looks like Thresh stepped up a little bit where he should have just backed off. I think, honestly, that the Thresh made a little bit of a mistake, but you could, like, look at Israel. He has no mana. You have a red buff. I think that this is a really strong, like, for, he can't arcane shift away. If you get the red buff slow, like, Jan has no health. There you go. Keep going. Oh, shoot. It looks like you're going to get ganked. There's the ult. Oh, and Akali's here, so you're probably dead. Okay, there's the flash and the heal. Dang, a little unfortunate. I guess I... When I think back about what just happened, I think that, you know, before the Thresh died, if I were you, I would have been looking to play very aggressively. And, you know, think about the power spikes here. Ezreal has a Sheen. He was out of mana. Janna was really, really low. Your Thresh was low, but you were so strong. You had double buffs. Um, you had everything that you could want as Draven. You had a BF sword compared to a Sheen. I mean, the power was so heavily skewed in your favor compared to Ezreal, and I kind of think you maybe missed out an opportunity there where, I mean, you really, Draven at this point in the game with a BF sword lead like that is strong enough to 1v2. Um, now it means you need to pick up, you need to probably catch every axe if you're going to go all in, um, so it does put a little bit of pressure on your mechanics. If you miss one, you're probably going to pay for it, but, okay, it looks like, I think you're going to make it out alive here. Interesting exhaust. Oh, well, maybe not. All right, so it looks like Janna kind of baited you in there. I want to watch this one more time. So let's just think about the information we have. Right now, all we do is we see Janna on the minimap. This is kind of a, a mind game situation. Now let's think about this. Janna is probably one of the weakest duelists in the game, and she is coming up very aggressively, trying to like go ham, and there shows up Ezreal. So, in my mind, that seems like a little bit of a bait. Unfortunate that we missed our stand aside there, but I don't necessarily want to focus on mechanical errors. I want to focus more on gameplay decisions. And I think that that was a place where, if you think about it in hindsight, why would Janna step up to try and fight a Draven? I mean, there's no way she's going to win that fight 1v1. And so, in my mind, if, if you are lacking ward coverage like you were, I think that's where you have to realize that this is probably a bait and maybe be a little bit more mindful that there's no reason why Janna would be going aggressive like this unless she was baiting. If you had the vision control, however, I think that then you can know for sure what's going on and then you can go aggressive. Okay, it looks like, oh, got some flash, that's fine. Janna can be tough to pin down. Now, even though Janna can be tough to pin down, I still think you have to play your lane your way. You are still Draven. I mean, just look at, you know, Ezreal's rushing Triforce, which is fine, but you've got a BF Sword and a Pickaxe. Ezreal doesn't have mana, like... Okay, unfortunately, that's warded. Jarvan goes in. Oh, not quite following up like I think we maybe should have there. I guess I think, overall, that with... A lot of this early part of this game, I think, could be improved by just understanding the relation of power spikes. Think about what you want to do as Draven, and think about what Ezreal and Janna want to do. All Ezreal and Janna want to do is farm and poke and stay alive. Draven and Thresh, all they want to do is go all in, pick up kills, and snowball hard. I guess I maybe would have liked to see the Draven go a little bit more aggressive in certain situations. Okay, now a gank comes in. Good stand aside, good 
reaction from Thresh. He lands a hook, that's fine, to continue to disengage. Defend your tower, that's fine. Alright, we're just going to push this out, that's fine. Now at this point in the game is when you start kind of looking around and you're seeing that your other lanes are losing. Top lane is getting smashed, mid lane is getting smashed, Akali is getting really big. Got a little bit of a fight here. Actually, I missed much of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I catch this. Uh-oh. Totally just messed up there. See where this Garner comes in? Sorry, guys. Okay. So, when you see that, I think that an important thing to do in this stage of the game is to understand that you are the best hope for carrying this game. And so, I think at this stage in the game, you need to start thinking about... Okay, I'm going to pause it right here. I think it's important to start thinking about risk-reward analysis. Um, how many risks do you want to take? Especially on Draven. Draven is a champion that can be very risk-rewarding. Re if you take a big risk, you can get a ton of kills. Like, Draven can just do so much. So I think because your lanes are losing... I mean, why not just go super ham and try to pick up a bunch of kills and snowball this game back in your favor? You guys are clearly falling behind across the map. So, I think the correct response is to say, you know what, I'm just going to go as aggressive as I can, try to pick up some kills, and do my best to try and win this game myself. Thresh gets a nice two-man flay. I think, you know, going, stepping up and picking that axe, trying to dance along the edge of this tower aggro, fortunately Thresh takes a couple of tower shots, I guess I would have liked to see you being a little bit more aggressive here, as if Ezreal's probably going to pick up another kill. Yep, Pantheon's coming in. A lot of, lot of attention spent bot lane. Yep, and then you're going to die. So, not necessarily too much that could have been done there. I think if you had gone aggressive, it probably would not have paid off. Basically what's happening now is the, the power from the rest of the map is snowballing. Um, but if we just simply look at at what you can control, I don't want to talk at all about the other lanes because I don't think it's helpful. I don't think it's helpful to sit and think, oh, well, if only the Vagar hadn't given the Akali five kills, you know, or whatever, three deaths, whatever he has. You know, that isn't necessarily going to be helpful for you in improving your gameplay. I think, however, <coughs> there were some opportunities you could have had to pick up some early kills and to be a little bit more aggressive Instead, Ezreal is pretty much even with you, if not ahead. Um, okay, nice. Very nice use of your ult there to pick up a kill. You clearly have the damage. You know, Infinity Edge Rush Draven has a lot of damage. I think this is the time in the game where you really want to try to be aggressive. It's fine to keep sieging here. Okay, it looks like we're going to be fighting. Jarvan goes in. Very nice. Your team does a nice job of following up. Thresh takes a little bit too much damage, but he's going to be okay. Good stand aside there. Okay, you guys are actually playing this siege quite well. Although, okay, it looks like we're going to go top. Click that big wave. Maybe not a terrible decision. I maybe would have preferred to see you stay with your team and just try to push down that tower. Especially, okay, it looks like Akali is going to get some, a kill. Ezreal's trying to chase them down. I guess I'm trying to decide whether or not I would have liked to seen you stay mid or come top and get all this farm. I mean, it certainly is good to continue farming, but maybe would have preferred to see you stay with your team. I don't know, I guess that's maybe a judgment call you can make. Okay, it looks like we're going into maybe a Last Whisperer. That's totally fine. Um... I don't know a ton about Draven builds. I would consider getting a Brutalizer and maybe a Ghostblade. I think that's a really strong item choice. Infinity Edge and Ghostblade, Last Whisper is like your first three items, is like an obscenely strong Draven. You've got a ton of armor pen, a ton of flat AD, a ton of crit. Um, very, very bursty. 
That would be the build that I would go for on Draven. Okay, this is a fine fight to pick. Now when help shows up, backing out is good. Nice job. Okay, try to get out of the Pantheon. Good flash. Good heal. Alright, hopefully they keep chasing into your team. Good. Oh, unfortunately got stunned though. That's okay. Um, maybe just play a little bit more passively there. I mean, you know that Pantheon's going to come out of that stun and have his crowd control up. But overall, that's okay. I think you played that pretty well. You guys have done a nice job in this mid-game of trying to pull things back in your favor. So I would just try to keep it up. I would try to continue to group. Um, and understand, thinking about, let's talk about Pantheon and Akali and Skarner. Um, those three champions in particular are obscenely strong at killing an isolated target. So like, look at Jarvan here. He's getting, you know, he's in a lot of trouble because he's isolated. And so what's the best way to deal with that? I think the best way to deal with that is to try and group. Um, you know, splitting and, and isolating yourselves is probably not the best way to deal with that. Here, here Kali is picking up a bunch of kills. Ooh. So I think that I maybe would have preferred to see you staying with your allies. Um, instead, your allies are getting picked off, which you can't control. Ooh. Maybe you could have been a little bit more aggressive there on that hook. But... Oh, good use of your W. Good stand aside. Oh, okay, Thresh is body blocking, that's good. Yep, just go heal. Yeah, I guess I maybe would have liked to prefer to see you continue to stay grouped. Think about the good things that were happening in this game. When you were mid, you were grouped as five, you were doing a nice job of dealing with your team, even though they were ahead. Now, I think you've been a little bit um, focused on... On, on staying in the side lanes, and, and certainly that will power you up, but I think that it is important to think about the way your team, you know, it, they really need your damage. Your team is weak. You are pretty strong. You know, with this Infinity Edge Last Whisper Rush, you know, that's a pretty big power spike for Draven. I would have liked to see you maybe stay with your team a little bit more, focus on trying to help them. Let's see if what Jarvan does. Okay, it look, you definitely know that Pantheon's going to come for you. Good job. That was well played. Overall, that was pretty good. I definitely think that with your team comp, staying grouped together, not isolating yourselves, not allowing yourselves to be picked off, is really the way things that sh the way things should be going. Uh, Akali's definitely coming in. That's yeah. So you know, a little bit unfortunate there. Definitely a product of you guys being behind in terms of items. But, oh, Akali, that is going to be... Okay, nice, they picked her up. Can Vagar do it? I don't think so. Don't do it. Don't do it, Jarvan. All right, so a couple things to review. You know, playing Draven with Thresh against an Ezreal Janna. Be aggressive in the early laning phase. I think there were maybe some opportunities that were missed. As we move into this mid-game, understand that Akali, Pantheon, Skarner are really, really good at isolating, you know, or at, at, at picking off isolated targets. Um, and so don't give them the opportunity to do that. Try to stay grouped. Try to stay in a position where you can help one another. Um, you know, isolating yourselves, going to side lanes, is, are the types of decisions that are really going to cause problems. You know, this is a big grouped team fight. I think this is where you guys are strong. Good use of your ult there to get a whole bunch of people in the AoE. Nice job. Now, a lot of focus fire here on the Akali. That's fine. Thresh is doing a nice job appealing for you. Good use of the pink ward there by Thresh, I believe. And probably smart to just back off. Oh, he landed the hook. I th think you could have maybe done it. Oh, she's got her shroud, but the pink ward should reveal her. Nice. Good flash. Okay, that was nice. That was very well played. Good to let that axe drop. That axe would have been your death. And I think, yeah, at this point, definitely try and continue to stay grouped. Alright, so, looks like you got a zeal, maybe going for a phantom dancer or something, that's fine. Now, um... This is something that you would want to seat check from a streamer, is what the optimal build is. 
my thought process on Draven is that attack speed is a v makes playing Draven much more mechanically difficult. And so that's where I maybe would have preferred to see Ghostblade instead of Fanmancer, but that's not to say Fanmancer is a bad item choice. I guess I just, you know, I don't know, just a thought process. Check, see what streamers are building. See what guys like Fabi and, and Geronimo are going to build on Draven. Check out pro builds. Um, but when I think about Draven, when I theorycraft a build for Draven, Draven is all about his Q, right? You know, 213 bonus physical damage. That is a ton. And it's based on his attack damage. So how do we scale that? Well, we scale that with flat AD, and we scale that with armor pin. Attack speed won't necessarily be a great stat just because you have to catch the axis and I think that attack speed can make that process more difficult. Now if you're an experienced mechanically strong player I think that attack speed is fine but if you are struggling a little bit with Draven mechanics I think that it's smarter to you know pursue the flat AD and the armor pin and to skip on the attack speed. Just my thought process on Draven. So, you know, a build like Infinity Edge, Ghost Blade, Last Whisper, Bloodthirster. Like, that build has a ton of flat AD, a ton of armor pen. Um, okay, anyways, it looks like a fight is breaking out. Nice focus on the Akali. Very, very nice, well played. Doing a nice job of staying in. Okay, now we see the Pantheon ult coming in. That's good. I think at this point you probably just got to try to stand your ground keep fighting alright so far so good now at this point you probably want to maybe alright good use of the ult very nice this is a really nice fight I think you did a nice job and then Ezreal's gonna get it in the end but the yeah the Janus shield's gonna save him overall I think that was pretty well played um, unfortunately the, the team fight wasn't won however just trying to focus on what you did I think you did a pretty good job there. I um, don't know if I can necessarily say that you could have done anything different. I mean, you have to realize at this point your team is down pretty far. You know, your your Vagar is having a difficult time. He's so far behind at items. Your Nidalee is becoming increasingly useless. So I think that the team f loss of the team fight is mostly just a result of your team being behind. But focusing on you and what you did, I think you played that last fight pretty well. Um, and then from here on out, I'm assuming that they just kind of roll over you with all of their item leads. I mean, just looking at the item difference between Nidalee and Pantheon and Akali and Vagar is pretty much the story of this game. Now, what can we take away? Well, I think that there were opportunities for us to play a little more aggressively in the early game. Really be looking to capitalize on the opportunities that Thresh sets up for you. You know, Thresh landed some hooks, and he did a nice job of being aggressive in the early game. Try to take advantage of that. Um, and then I think in the mid-game, I guess I would have liked to maybe see you continue what you guys were doing mid. There was that time when you went top, I think there was a, the next time down when you went bottom, and your team really had a tough time dealing with, with how you know far ahead their soul lanes were. But I don't necessarily think that you guys were going to lose fights when you were grouped. And so I think your best chance is to try to group together you know, let Pantheon and Akali go all in, go too far. Make sure you're not getting picked off. I think that was your best chance to win. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Um, any sort of feedback would be very much appreciated. Any helpful, uh, constructive criticism, tips or tricks for this Draven player would be appreciated. And uh, keep sending in those replays, and I'll see you soon. Bye.